Ireland's best and most beautiful houses. And this one is astonishing. The standard's been very high this series, but this house is glossy magazine perfect. It's created with an uptown, upbeat, urban lifestyle in mind, but designed to make the most of its beautiful rural setting. <laughs> This contemporary bar near St. Paul is home to Drew and Pamela Wiley. It's an exclusively stylish brand built into a steep gradient, creating landscaped gardens on two levels, linked by a man-made stream. Internally, there are three levels connected by a spiral staircase and an elevator. The sleeping quarters are top and bottom, with main living space in between. The interior matches the industrial exterior but is softened by panoramic views and the ingenious use of furnishings and artworks. It's gadget heaven, with automated curtains and state-of-the-art sound and lighting, and to top it all, there's even a proper playground for the grandkids. What inspired you to create a home that's so discreet in the landscape? I didn't have a dream home that I wanted to put on a specific site. I had a site, and then I had to decide what home fitted to it. We're not trying to make a statement to the outside world. Where we want this to make a statement is the friends and family that come into this home and enjoy it with us, that they will feel comfortable in it, that the whole environment's right for, for family living. You're obviously not frightened of uh, just doing your own thing in an interior like this. I mean, we've used some things that we brought from other homes. Uh, we've bought some new pieces for here. It's just a blend and a mix of all the things that we've gathered up over 35 years together. There is the astonishing light installation on the staircase. That looks a million dollars, but it wasn't, was it? It most certainly wasn't, no. My wife found those uh, white globes, strung nine of them together with a clear cable and hung them in that manner that gave the, the, the sort of spiraling downwards of light, and it seems to work perfectly well. We spent our money from the outside in. Yeah. Uh, rather than from the inside out. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see in the, the landscaping and what we've done outdoors, it, uh, it really makes an impact. And that, to me, is as important as the kitchen or the bathroom or the living room. Why have you got a play pot in the Well, uh, that was the place where every evening the diggers were parked and our landscape uh, gardener had awful trouble trying to decide what he could do with that space. And when we told him that our son and daughter now were expecting twin boys, uh, he came almost the following day and said, I know exactly what I'm going to do with this space. Brilliant. Well, it is an extraordinary structure with some incredible innovations. Let's go and catch up with Des outside, who's really enjoying the architecture. It's definitely a real sense of trying to integrate the house into the rest of the landscape. And in fact, I mean, the funny thing is I can see a very traditional barn over there, and there's not a big deal of difference between a barn and the house. The barn is the house. Do you think the barn is the house? The barn is the house. Barn Maybe it's another house. I think that's clever. I do too. You, when you're building in the countryside, you want to integrate. Yeah. So what form should you use other than the agricultural form of the barn? It's mm. such a soft, sort of mm. low-key element. For hundreds of years, houses were built to dominate landscape, but this... It's discreet to the point of, of, of camouflage. Yeah. There, is, there, there are too many buildings that just stand out in the countryside. To design something that's subtle and understated is always much more difficult. So the agricultural form is very clever, but it's also the way you approach it, that you see it from half a mile away and just catch the top, and you're not sure whether it's a house or whether it's a barn. Mm. Then the way you come around the corner, and, the, it, and just it unveils itself. Yeah. So they've worked very well on this. It's good. All the other statements on the outside, definitely, but inside is very, very clever, I think. You're coming in on the mid-level, so you're only going up a level and down one level. It doesn't really feel like a very steep house. I particularly like the way the top floor feels like a penthouse, which has got a view of the mornings. Yeah. This side of the travel tower, every direction you've got a view. So it's really maximising its enjoyment of the landscape, but actually being very understated within that landscape itself. It is indeed. Right, so fabulously discreet on the outside, let's go and have some fun inside with Michael, who's on the entry level. I honestly think this is the first time I've ever seen a, a, an ultra-modern kitchen with a black arbour in it, but I think I love it. I love it. This house is a tour de force of quality, design, 
the quality of living that they're, they're looking for. This kitchen could be in Soho with this great big island that you wouldn't think would work, but it does because it's the only counter space. Yeah. Flowing into this wonderful space for the dining room with this dining table is 20 years old. It's been yeah. in their, their lives for years. And that's what this house is about. Well, look at the colour as well, because it feels terribly confident and, and it feels very new and it feels very now. And great design. I mean, the doors, the pocket doors that just hide away to separate rooms. The draperies are hidden up inside the soffits. Curtains. Oh, it's curtains for me. <laughs> There's also such an extraordinary eye for detail in terms of uh, the technology, the fact that the wood burning stove yeah. spins, you well, know, so it can be angled. It's part of but it's not the focal point. Look at, look at the ceiling. You've got the, the, these amazing audio grills right. that are the same size as the lights. Right. Very, very clever. Surround sound without seeing it. Mm. And the, the whole home automation, that's, that's a part of life that really can change how you live mm. in a home. If you're going to watch a movie, push a button, and the window treatment's closed, lights come down, Music goes on. It all sounds very James Bond villainy to well, me. Well, the you know, house is very much like that. Suddenly you get a large map of the world made of steel <laughs> and a warhead. I like that kind of decorating. But as Michael says, it is a tour de force of seamless living down here. But just you wait until we go upstairs to meet Suzanne because there are a lot of innovations up there and a few surprises. It's so innovative, I think, to make use of the fact that the site's slow. So why not have... Yeah, kind of a secondary terrace up here just for the master bedroom. I think it's fabulous to have a bedroom terrace, especially yes. with that outside. It's yeah. fun, it's architectural, and then you come into this little living area with a future-proofed lift. I mean, hi, they've really thought about the design of this so, so well. They've got a cunning little butler's kitchen now. So basically, if you make wake up in the middle of the night and you fancy some cheese on toast or a pot of tea, you don't have to go all the way down to it. So really, they're quite self-contained up here, which I think is lovely. Yeah, well, look, this is a suite. This is a, a bedroom suite, which is what it's all about. That whole idea of suite living mm. is uh, is definitely what people want from their master bedroom, their dressing area. They're all suite, but they've taken it one bit even yeah. <laughs> further with the terrace and yeah. connecting it to the garden. Yeah. But what an amazing place. I mean, it's so stylish. It's so confident. Mm. There's such attention to detail, such commitment to detail which I'm very, very, very impressed with. The lighting has been well thought out, the sound system, everything has been considered, uh, but done in a very sort of subtle way. This is a real home. It's got beautiful artwork. It's got beautiful um, pieces of furniture, beautiful colors, but it's not overdone in any way. And it's quite in many ways inexpensively done in a lot yeah. of places. See, see, I promised you a treat. And what a grand finale to the day's programme. Three extraordinary houses, three quite different houses, but is one of today's houses up to becoming this year's House of the Year?